What's up, everybody? So we've got a good one here today. I am Adam Weiler, founder and CEO of Sunken Stone. And I'm Ed, catalog manager of Sunken Stone. And today we're going to go over flat files on Amazon. Everyone's favorite topic. Oh, <laughs> first off, if you manage listings on Amazon, this one is going to help you um, with that process because managing listings on Amazon is not easy if you've ever done it. And how long have you been um, managing listings on Amazon for? Um, so I've been managing listings for about six years now. Um, started off, you know, I was the one going in and like editing um, through Seller Central each item one by one. And the company I worked for at the time, we had a few clients and we had just like hundreds of products in our catalog. So that way was just like very inefficient. Um, so I'm um, doing a bit more research on Seller Central. I found that using the flat files, I could add all this inventory in bulk and it'll take, you know, a matter of a couple hours rather than and a couple before months. We, before we dig into that, let's get, you know, so you say flat file and people's eyes glaze over or they have no idea. So like, what yeah. is an Amazon flat file? Like, how do you, how would you describe it to like an entry level? And then how would you describe it? Like, you know, to more advanced Amazon sellers. So a flat file is basically just a glorified name for an Excel file, um, okay. which an Excel file, you, you know, you can like upload tons of information to Amazon in bulk. And it, it also allows you to upload more details and keywords um, into your backend. And some of this data is just not accessible when you're adding a product, you know, one by one through Seller Central. So let's talk, let's go into that, right? So I think that's an important distinction. So let's say you've got 10 products or even you got you know, one product, right? And you've only created products in Seller Central before manually, right? You go through that process, you add a product. So traditionally, if you're going to create a product in Amazon Seller Central, you know, you literally go into Seller Central, add a product, right? And then you've probably seen this process before. So you can either add your listing onto an existing product or you can create a new one right and yeah. you can create a new product you know that's for a different topic but you know we can go into upcs and gs1 and all that stuff um let's for instance let's add a you know i don't want to go baby product because or beauty and personal care because that will probably slow us down with some some certifications Okay. Let's add a new toaster <laughs> or dishwasher. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? Your call. Uh, let's go with dishwasher. Okay, awesome. Here's see how we can ship that. <laughs> and then <laughs> this might be not <laughs> able. We'll use it in this case. So, what type of dishwasher are we going with? Uh, I think portable, maybe. Awesome. Boom, portable dishwasher. So, like, this is. You can see just like we're creating one of these and this takes a long time. Um, you know, this is an UPC. We're gonna make something up here, right? Um, what's our product name? So uh, it's washers. Um, brand name, Ed's Appliances. Congratulations. <laughs> you you're on the front appliance line. And we're going to copy that over and we're going to call it portable dishwasher one. Okay, there's three items that require attention. Like, okay, right? So, literally, oh, here we go. Wow, we don't want to forget the seller skew. So, if we yeah. get the seller skew here, they're going to assign something random to us and it's going to be like, it's going to be hard to keep track of things, yeah. right? So, portable. So, Ed's, what do we do here? Ed's appliances, portable dishwasher one, and then like variation one. I don't know. How do you, what, do you have any tips for people who are watching? Like, how do you like to call SKUs? Like, do you have a nice naming convention that you like to use? Um, usually I'll use like the, the manufacturer part number, um, which in this case, PDW1. Uh, and then, you know, I just like to add brand, um, manufacturer part number, and then 
if there's a variation, I'll put like, you know, whatever it is, the, you know, uh, the variation theme, for example, the color. So Ed's APD W1, and then I'll put dash blue or whatever the variation. Nice. That's something that you don't realize that like saves you so much time yeah. when you standardize SKU names. We're going to go through this just once. I mean, literally going through once is such a freaking pain in the ass. Yeah. Right. It's like, imagine if you have to do this and then, okay, what's the issue? Oh, let's say it's like telling me the EPC is invalid. Let's see if we add something. <laughs> Zero, no. Boom. Oh. So coming back. Um, so we're using a UPC from our list. Uh, oh, this is fun, right? Yeah, the brand registry. <laughs> yeah. I'm not registered yet. No. <laughs> So, we'll, you know, this is this is what we have to go through each time we you register a new brand and we've got a team that takes care of that. So let's assume for this for this video and, and for this content, we're going to assume we've gone through brand registry, we've set it, set that all up. Um, well, first off, do flat files help with that process at all? Or do, you, do you get an error if you try to upload? Um, yeah, so once you up upload the flat file, um, Amazon um, validates that file. And then once it's finished processing, you can actually access error reports. And depending on your account, um, there's either an Excel version of the error report, which shows you exactly where the error was committed and it'll highlight it. And some accounts have a text version, which is just, you know, it'll give you the SKU, the error code and the reason. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. Is there any reason why some accounts have it and some accounts don't? Um, you know, that's just one of those like weird things about Amazon. Um, I think the newer accounts all come with the Excel version standard. I think that's okay. just for some of the older accounts where you might have to ask for uh for access to the Excel version. Okay. Now I went over here, so let's say. You know, that was to, to create one listing. Now imagine you have different sizes and different colors, like, right, like three different colors and four different sizes. Now you've got 12 child variations along with the parent. That would be a pain in the ass to create. So why don't, um, I don't know if you want to drive or tell me where to go, like, you know, walk me through this next process um, on, on how to create or, or edit listing. So once you're in inventory, add products via upload, um, you're, you're going to want to create your category flat file. And this is the main file we use when um, creating a new listing. So, you know, in this case, we're going to, we're adding a um, portable dishwasher. So we, we can go ahead and use keywords to kind of like search and Amazon will kind of like hint us um, where we should go. So, nice. I mean, we usually do uh, product research in order to find the best category. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, for this case, we haven't done our research. So I'm just going to select what I think um, and, is right. So, and it is pretty dang important as far as marketing, advertising, competition, visibility on what you choose there. Like it might not look like it, but you want to go scout these first before you do that. Because you have, you could either be buried number seven thousand bestseller in that category, or you can be the bestseller or top ten in that category. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, once we find the right category, we're gonna go ahead and select, and then you see here we can actually add multiple um, different categories. So let's say we not only sell um, portable dishwashers, but we sell toasters. So, you know, Ed's appliances oh, not nice. only sells toasters, but they also sell dishwashers. Um, so once we have everything we want to uh, list onto Seller Central, we go ahead and scroll down and select our marketplaces. Um, I'm just going to do um, Amazon.com, which is the US okay. version. And then you have two options here. You can either select the advanced and before, mode. Um, before we go, so 
why uncheck.ca and .mx? Like, why keep those checked? Like, what are what are those scenarios in which you would do that? Yeah. So, I mean, if you're selling on on different um, Amazon sales channels, um, for sure you can select. You know, if you're selling on Amazon Canada, um, you know, select it so you can add um, the listing onto Amazon Canada or Amazon uh, Mexico. So, um, you know, for the case for for this tutorial, I'm just going to select Amazon US. Once, once you've selected the marketplaces you want to add your listing to, um, you're going to select the type of template. So there's two different modes. There's an advanced mode, which will select all of the, the keyword and the optional um, fields that you can add to your listing. Or you can select custom and then customize your Excel sheet to only include the, types of, the type of information you want to add. Um, I recommend adding advance, um, you know, just so you have the most data and now, you know, what, yeah, I guess like, what's the question you're asking that, that would determine which one you use? Like, why would you ever want a custom if you can have everything? Um, the only reason, reason I would select custom is if, you know, you don't have much information that you want to add onto Amazon. So for example, if you only want to add images and variation and you just quickly want to add product as, as fast as possible, I think this would be your best bet, selecting custom. Um, but if I, I, I honestly think you should always select advanced because it just has, you know, all the type of information that you want to add. And, you know, in the future, maybe you want to add keywords to your, to your listings. And then you, you have that option with advanced and you don't have to create a whole new uh, template. Update that. Okay. So you're saying, um, you know, this is more for a like generating that original flat file for your product that then yeah. when you edit, you don't need to go in back to this again. You can just go take that file that you already downloaded. Yeah, because something I've seen with some clients is that they'll create a custom and then, you know, they, they only want to add minimal information. Yeah. But, you know, maybe like six months down the road, you have an ad budget and you want to start adding keywords or something of that nature, then, you know, you'll have to create a whole new uh, flat file when you could have just selected advanced and have all the options available to you. And that's big. Um, so that, that is a, a big differentiator. So like, yeah, get the advanced, get all, and then save that somewhere, right? Like save that on Google drive or Dropbox yeah. or, or, I mean, hopefully yeah. somewhere besides your computer. And then that's <laughs> the source of truth when you're using exactly. Flat files. Exactly. Um, one one thing too and i don't know if we're going to go over it now or later but like as a prevention against black hat attacks or as a prevention against other contributions from other sellers you kind of need to fill out all of the spots on yeah on uh on an on the on that flat file yeah, it's, it's highly recommended. And like you mentioned earlier, it's definitely your, you should definitely store it somewhere safe because that's your go-to for, you know, all the, the data for your listings. And, and you know, teaser, it's just a, a good, yeah. Just a teaser, like we'll yeah. tease to the end and we've got something really cool that's like, takes care of that as well. Yeah, so once you've selected um, the type, the mode that you want for your template, you're gonna go ahead and select generate template. And what it will do is it's gonna, Generate the custom template that you just created and then cool. download it. Let's take a look. Seems very intimidating, but it's not as bad as it looks. It's so yeah, at first glance, it's very intimidating. Um, yeah. you know, you, you you just get like smacked in the face with all of this uh, information. <laughs> like if this is the um, first time you're logging into this, what is going through your head right now? I mean, the first time I saw this, I didn't even like see this left side. I just saw this in. I'm guessing it's in Mandarin or whatever. Yeah. And I, I was just like overwhelmed. <laughs> and I just I just went ahead and closed it. I'm like, no, I'm gonna keep adding back to Seller money. Central. Let's yeah. go back to Seller Central. Nice and clean. But like you know, it's becoming more and more, even if you create the product in Seller Central, like you kind of need this just to fill in that keyword data or fill in that back end data. Yeah. That is only available via flat file and not via seller central. Yeah, um, for sure. And I mean, once you start to like break the flat file down and you know, just like start yeah. 
look at the instructions by section, you know, it's a, a, a bit less intimidating and you just have to like read through all the information. Um, okay. so it's not overwhelming. <laughs> so take us through. If you're creating a new listing in here, where do you even go? Yeah, so, I mean, once you've gone through all the instructions, um, you know, Amazon has, they laid out all the, you know, the image standards, um, highly recommend you go through all of this before like creating products for your photos for your products. Um, here's like a good reference point under example, here's how some of um, your listings should look like. And then, you know, they have notes as far as like children and variants, which we'll get to in a second. Cool. Um, very important to, if you don't understand something when you're filling out, um, your flat file, um, data definitions is a good point of reference, um, to see, uh, to get a brief explanation of, um, what you have to put under that column. So once we're in here, um, intimidation alert, yeah. intimidation, intimidation <laughs> yeah. alert. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I've been on Amazon since 2007, and this still, and it scares the shit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's gotten better over the years. I know there was like <laughs> flat file version one, and now we're on flat mm -hmm. file version two. Um, but yeah, once you're in here, um, I like I like to break it down. Um, okay. So there's different sections. There's this first section, which is required. Okay. Um, and then we keep going. We'll have a section for your images, which okay. um, it's only required to have one image and all the other ones are optional. After so, that- Yeah, let's save images for that because that's like its own little topic yeah. that, we can, that we can jump into. For sure. Um, after cool. images, there's a variation. This is where you add the parent or child tag and then where you set the variation and, theme and this is um just to like break it down in layman's terms like uh parent child variation like what you know give me an example of that on on amazon and like why are those important so a good example is let's go back to ed's um portable dishwasher let's <laughs> say i have <laughs> let's say i have a white one i have a blue one I have a red dishwasher. And oh, nice. Dishwasher. Well, you're going, you're going, <laughs> you're going a little interior design action. Yeah. <laughs> so I would create a parent listing, which kind of like holds all of these different color variations under one uh, bracket. And it's okay. like, um, and this is good for, you know, SEO and for, um, for listing optimization. Yeah, for searchability, listing optimization, to kind of have all the options on one Amazon page. Because yeah. let's say your customer's looking for a dishwasher, the first one they see is the black one. And then, yeah. you know, they could have missed out on possibly, you know, getting the one that they like, which would have been the blue one. So mm -hmm. it's definitely important to kind of like group together all the variations of the, the products that you're selling. Love it. So we'll actually get back to this. We'll add some dummy data, um, but uh, following variation is basic. And this is just like basic information as far as like your product description, which, you know, it's um, basically the selling point, uh, part of the selling point, um, describing your product, the model, model name, uh, model year. And, you know, this varies from flat file to flat file. There's some flat files that only have this column, which is update, oh, delete, and partial update. So each flat file that you generate is going to be a custom flat file. And that's because we're in the home appliance section. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be a bit different than if you were selling shoes or something. Um, so this section is completely optional, but it's probably the most important section, and that's discovery. And this is where you add your bullet points, you know, which are basically your, your five selling points that you get for, it's basically the elevator pitch for your, your product, which is right next to the buy button. Um, this is um, mostly what customers read um, in order to decide whether they're gonna purchase. Yeah, if you're gonna do one or the other description or bullet points, you know, spend yeah, your time on the bullet points. 
most important. And then, you know, search terms are for um, your keywords for searchability. And then, you know, there's, if so if we were gonna create the, uh, the variation theme um, for our parent to be colors, this is where we would add the, the color. So the white, black, blue, red, um, dishwashers that we're selling. Um, and, you know, it's just now, more- Now, question about this, it's like, I mean, I, I am leading the witness, but like this, why are there so many columns all the way in? Like, it must be so crazy just keeping track of something if you're editing it. Yeah, um, it's pretty crazy, but, you know, um, we selected two different categories into this one flat file. So, you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a pretty big um, Excel file because it's taking into account all of the possible fields that you can add for, in our case, toasters and uh, portable dishwashers. So, yeah, yeah I mean, column B, H, B, I, B, like, it's crazy. That's yeah, why I, I mean, think that's the biggest thing for me. It's like, and the slider is like a third of the way over, like a fifth of the way over. Yeah, it seems like it goes forever. Um, but yeah, the, the categories that we selected just have so much in them, you know, compared to uh, shoes or clothes or, you know, like. So one of the, you know, pro tips here. So let's say you go through this and you have like, you know, image, so images which we'll cover, title, bullet points, description, some keywords, right? Like main things to hit. And you're like, okay, the other stuff, I don't really want to, I don't really want to get to now. I don't have time or, or energy, but I, I need to put some data in there, right? Otherwise, yeah. black hat hackers can and will update your listing, put like drug stuff in there, ban yeah. keywords. Like I've seen like cocaine, marijuana, like that they'll inject yeah. in there. So like, what should you put, you know, noise level unit of measure, right? Like what would you put there if you don't, no, like instead of 80 decibels, like well, do you just put like dishwasher or like a keyword or what do you? I mean, I would put something like very generic. I mean, in this case, I'll put like moderate, low, you know, nothing too crazy. Something that nice. like, you know, off the top of your head, you can kind of just like fill in. Um, nice. But I mean, for sure, like the most important things in, in this discovery area is the keywords, uh, product description, the bullet points, and I would probably say like size and dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, makes sense. That's big. Um, I don't, it's like we're not even a third of the way. <laughs> this yeah. <is> crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, once we're done with discovery, which this goes forever, um, there's product enrichment. And I mean, this. This is, um, this will vary also from category to category. Sometimes you don't even see this on some flat files, but you know, this is just like, you know, just more information to kind of like, um, you know, um, just add a bit more to your listings as far as like, you know, energy guides and, you know, the finish types. Um, this is some of the, enrichment. yeah, so some of the, the legal documents that you might want to add and stuff that goes here and these are like more hyper specific um details that you can add to your thing and i mean if you have the time or the team or right like these are important things like every little bit is not a keyword is another um piece of discoverability so if you're on yeah. if you're on the left hand side and you're searching dishwashers and you see all those like check boxes like you know, for length or width or dimensions or like this, Amazon uses this, they, they index this data. Yeah, and I mean, it's also this, this section in particular is good for, you know, the comparisons that you see on some Amazon listings um, mm -hmm. where it compares similar products. And I mean, this, this section right here could be the difference between someone purchasing your product versus someone yeah. else's. So it's definitely um, recommended that you, out as much information as possible, especially in this. There's section. only an easier way. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, know, you mentioned that was important. 
Yeah, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but like the size of your product inside the box, outside the box, okay. um, you know, yeah. volume, capacity. Um, I think we're three fourths. All right. So fulfillment, <laughs> this is where you add your, your package size, weight. If you stuck with us this far, <laughs> we appreciate it. You're, you're on the marathon. Yeah, and this is where you select your fulfillment center. So if you're using like FBA, um, this is where okay. you add. All so your that's package. that's so it's crazy, and maybe we call this out in there. So it's like you definitely want to hit that, right? Like is FBA or is FBM? That's like all the way in column G S. <laughs> so this yeah, is I'm this is an important section that, that we, we should call out or highlight. Yeah, so fulfillment, very important. This is where you select your fulfillment center. So if you're, you know, doing um, FBA, this is where you would actually select, um, you know, Amazon NA or um, also where you would put all your package um, sizes and dimensions, which, mm -hmm. you know, is important because that affects like your seller fees and you, you definitely don't want to put any wrong information. Yeah, that's my um, pro tip here on this one. You know, it's like take a look at those dimensions and then run them through an FBA calculator. And if you're close, see if you can re-engineer re the package to save an inch here or half an inch there. Like yeah. that half an inch could be $4 difference between yeah. the next tier up on, on FBA fees. It's kind of crazy. Um, so this is probably where a lot of the troubleshooting that um, a lot of sellers um, have to go through because there's a lot of like restrictions on Amazon as far as, you know, um, types of warnings and, you know, legal documents that you need to include with your, your uh, products and like certifications. Mm -hmm. So this is a part where you might You're have to familiar go back to with this. this yeah, get very section. familiar <laughs> and you know, sometimes your product might not go through the first time and it's, and then, you know, I'll show you guys the error code. Um, there might be some um, documentation that you might need to. So um, definitely another important section and it's all the way on column HC. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. And then finally, we're oh, at red. offer. <laughs> <Right> <laughs> Yeah, all the way in JY, usually, we're at offer. Usually and this in is, nature, it's like bright red, it's like danger. So yeah. <laughs> um, another very important part. I mean, this is where you put um your prices, your sale prices. This is okay. where you add um your dates if you're gonna run any sales. Um, this is where you would add it. Um if we would have selected Amazon um, Canada or Mexico, we also would have seen um, columns for pricing on you know, those sales channels as well. Okay. Um, this is where you can also like set your launch date. Let's say you know you're getting your yeah, product. Yeah, talk ready. about talk about that. What you know? Why not set it today? What you know? What what what's your thoughts around launch date? Yeah. So. Let's say you know your your product is still you know being manufactured. You want to set a um, a, a launch and release date if you want to allow um, pre-orders for your product. So you would add it under these two columns. Uh, launch date is when your product um, first starts. Um, where you can start the pre-order date, and then release okay. date is when your the product is actually available and um, ready for immediate sale. And, you know, I know there's some talk of, of more advanced sellers of like how they position that because there's, you know, there's the honeymoon period, which is the initial kind of time where Amazon evaluates how your product does. And then, but so you don't want to use that honeymoon period up when you don't have inventory. Then also you don't want to, if you can get pre-orders for that product, that's, that's money in your pocket. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Also, uh, mandatory field is item condition. Um, you know, this is where you would set like new or, I mean, I know you need like certifications to sell use item, but mm -hmm. you know, most sellers would just select new in this case. Okay. Yeah. 
B2B is there are some oh, um, users that have Amazon business accounts. Mm -hmm. And this is mostly for like quantity discounts. Um, you know, for some of the clients I've had in the past, um, you would see orders from um, Amazon business accounts and, you know, it'll be for like a gas station ordering like styrofoam cups and that kind of stuff. So if you, if quantity discounts and large orders like is something that- Like if a hotel wants to order a bunch of toasters, one for each room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you can provide quantity discounts um, through this section here. And you could also uh, offer lower prices for, you know, these business accounts. And I've heard that that Amazon is really pushing that B two B program hard. They're putting a lot of ad dollars on it, so it's hopefully something that that is worth you putting this in. Yeah, and actually, there are some government agencies that actually use Amazon for their procurement services. So they would buy through Amazon Business. So I mean, you could be selling huge quantities to the government um, if you set this up correctly. A lot of toast. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's pretty much Boom. So what, down. <laughs> okay. That, so that is, if you're creating a new listing, now, what right. about, what about for existing listings? Let's say you built out, um, all your products either via flat file or via, um, seller central, and you've made some edits in seller central, or you made some edits in flat files. Now, is there a way to get like, you know, let's let's say you did this for portable dishwasher and toaster, a couple variations, but then you had refrigerators and, and microwaves already live. Now, is there a way to get like your all your inventory all together um, on one flat file? Um, the way you would do that is through a category listing report and Clap. pro pro tip alert pro tip alert. Let's. let's <laughs> Um, the category listing report that actually can bring up your, your list, like it won't get all your information, but it will give you something to build upon. Okay. Um, so what's, yeah, what's a category listing report and how do you go, go about getting one? So you go to inventory reports okay. and, um, just, a, a note, not all accounts will have a category listing report. Um, yeah, so this one doesn't have a category listing report. Okay. Um, if your account doesn't have one, what you can do is just contact support and ask them to enable the category listing report. And then that way that's, you can just- That's crazy. I mean, I just want to highlight that. It's like, if you do anything from this video today, if you take one step, go enable the category listing report and okay. from seller support and go download it like that. If you do nothing else with us, <laughs> if you do if you not want nothing else, like that's the one step that all sellers should take. Yeah, um, um, because you definitely don't want to start from scratch. You want to like use the data you already have to kind of like, you know, copy and paste onto what, your master flat file. What per like if okay, let's say if we downloaded that category listing before, like what percent of those columns would be full? Uh, I mean, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I mean, it, I would say probably like 10, 15 percent. I, I mean, you saw how huge that <laughs> flat file was. But I mean, you know, it's it's definitely better than better than nothing. <laughs> OK, it's a starting it's point. Something. Save yeah. a couple hours or years. Yeah. Your life. <laughs> um, and I mean, speaking of listing other products, there's also um, you know, a couple other different flat files. There are these down here where it's price and quantity. All right. So the first flat file that we went through was the category specific inventory flat file, but there is actually a ton of different flat files. There's the inventory loader, which is pretty cool. If you already, if these products that you're selling already exist on the Amazon catalog, mm -hmm. um, you would, you would use this. All you would have to do is just include the ASIN, price, quantity, and shipping method. Oh, wow. And, and this, so this is if you are a distributor for a brand yeah, or exactly. a reseller for a brand and the listings already exist, someone's already created them. 
Yeah. So exactly. If you're like a distributor or reseller, you would use this file. And I mean, you can get thousands of products. I think like up to 10,000 products in one file and you can get them loaded overnight. So this is actually a very useful, useful tool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just, it's a very small file. I'll just go ahead and walk through it. Um, so not as intimidating once you come in here, there's, um, goes what up to, uh, okay. yeah, only BT. <laughs> not too bad. Um, but you see here, the required fields is just yep. from here to here. Um, and I mean, you can get thousands nice. of products listed. You just put the SKU that you want to name, you know, the products for, you know, let's say um, you're a reseller, you have your own SKU, and then you can use the ASIN of, you know, whatever product you're adding. So you would so add existing SKU, ASIN. Yeah, an existing ASIN. You would add the ASIN here, and then you would label. You can either add ASIN, UPC, GTIN, all that good stuff. Nice. And then... You can add your price. And you probably want to do ASIN because you know it matches. Yeah. If you use UPC, it might have a mismatch and give an error. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually um, uploaded using UPC and it's not reliable at all. Um, okay. Because, Pro tip. Pro tip. yeah, sometimes, <laughs> like, I remember I, I was listing products for this reseller client that was selling, you know, like power tools and drills. And I used the UPC list that they gave me and um, for some reason it was matching, it was linking to like phone cases and like oh. team jerseys or like football I jerseys. I remember and, in the early days of, of Amazon, like they didn't check for GS1 or UPC stuff. Like people would go to their cabinet in their pantry, <laughs> get like a UPC from like a Campbell's soup and then put that <laughs> on their like t-shirt yeah. design. So like it's insane, like you, the category cleanup or the catalog cleanup was, was nuts back in the day. Yeah. Because I mean, each UPC, I mean, to buy a UPC that costs like, I think it's like $35 or $40 for each UPC. And, you know, if you're someone just like trying to get around <laughs> Amazon, um, I mean, the so pro tip also another one, if you have the UPC problems, go to the GS1 UK, uh, version like a subscription there is way less expensive than the u.s version but they still work the same on amazon i think it's like a thousand dollars a year or for the first year versus like 100 or 200 wow. so yeah pro tip pro tip there awesome yeah so i mean on this file you can add your pricing there's also like simple um pricing automation nice. wow um you wow. can item condition that's quantity. using amazon's repricer tool and you know, so you want to, and then just add, to put a note here, you know, if you are the boss or the head of the channel or VP, right? Like editing, like you could bankrupt your business if you mess with column E and F the wrong way, right? Like, yeah, if you're selling, if you have a lot of products, you know, you're selling Apple iPod, or you're selling dishwashers, and someone, you know, in the US or any other country, like messes up the minimum price on column E and, and instead of ten dollars or a thousand dollars, they put ten. Well, now you're selling those dishwashers at ten bucks each. Like that yeah. could hurt. And I mean, let's say someone adds a UPC and it's the wrong UPC and it's to your product and they sell it for five dollars. Oh no, <laughs> you're screwed. And then Going in, like once you identify that that's a, that's a thing, that's a, that's an error, updating them back, you know, updating all the products back to the right price, that could be a challenge too, like while people are ordering them. So just sticking yeah. a pin in that for, for later discussion. <laughs> but, but like, you know, I mean, we've had, in, you know, we, we've had assist virtual assistants or overseas staff, like upload the wrong flat file and and make some pricing errors or make yeah. some catalog errors it happens yeah I, I mean that's that's why you have to like be very careful with flat files um because you can definitely either lose 
um, on you lose opportunity on sales because you know you price something way too high or you know bankrupt your business because you know you set up like a wrong automation it's crazy um, so it's crazy like tricky. one wrong sell on a spreadsheet and like you could really do some damage there yeah this is awesome i think people have a good idea of like of what flat files are for especially if they're creating new listings or or updating or or adding their listings to existing products um any final thoughts on you know flat files for product creation or for flat files in general um kind of on the stuff we've covered i mean just flat file is probably your best bet for adding your products to, to amazon um definitely don't recommend adding one by one through seller central um flat file is the way to go to just have all your your data consolidated into one place um and you know definitely keep this file safe and be very careful with it because very important awesome and i really appreciate your knowledge and your time on this we're going to have some more content coming up about how to upload um changes not just new asins but the changes to existing asins and then also just a little teaser into a future about a new tool that we developed to help make a lot of this stuff a lot easier i'm looking forward to that one i'm very excited about that awesome hey adam here click the link below and sign up for flat file pro you're going to get a free 60-day trial and after registering you're going to be able to self onboard or meet with an onboarding specialist that'll walk you through how the tool works so take a moment click the link below now and finally put an end to inefficient processes time wasting tactics and start watching your business on amazon flourish thanks um thanks for for watching if you made it this far pat yourself on the back go for a walk because watching us scroll sideways on a seven thousand column <laughs> thing like you deserve a shout out so thank you thank you buddy. <laughs> All right. See ya. I'm Adam. Yeah. And we're here with Ed and we'll, we'll talk to you soon.